in studying the word of the living Elohim of Israel, what we refer to as the Torah, which is the law, then we have Navin, which is the prophets, and um, there's particular order in the Tanakh that is different than the order in our King James Version of the Bible and other versions. In the, uh, the Tanakh, or the Jewish Bible, JPS, the order ends with First and Second Chronicles before we go over into Mat Matthew, Matayahu. So, this is something for us to think about. We know that Messiah was all, when he would quote things, sometimes... Uh, he would say, uh, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. The, 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 there is a Hebrew order of the Old Testament canon. And Hebrew Bibles are still published in this order. And modern Jews still use this order, although with a different order for the writings. The law includes Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The prophets include Joshua, Judges, 1 and 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the 12 minor prophets. Psalms stood as a synagogue, a part representing the whole for the writings. The writings include Psalms, Job, Proverbs, Ruth, Song of Songs, Ecclesiastes, Lamentations, Esther, Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah, and 1 and 2 Chronicles. The 1 and 2 Chronicles ends the, uh, the Tanakh. And with our Bibles, the next that we would read is Matthew or Matayahu. But in our King James, it's, it ends with Malachi, which appears after you look at it uh, out of order. It's Malachi in the King James Version and others. And then starts Matthew. So it looks like Malachi is given a message just before we enter into Matthew, uh, the, the beginning of the New Testament. So as I was studying and I began to observe uh, the order difference in the order, like first and second Samuel is really one book, and first and second Kings is really one book. I think we should note the differences because we are to read through the the uh, the Tanakh, and we come to the ending of ending of it by coming to First and Second Chronicles. I think that this is very important for us to to take note of it. I'm sure that. Many of, of us, not just me, have thought about the Old Testament books and and they are ordered the way they are in our English Bibles. And if we have given much thought, we've noticed that the English Old Testament is ordered by history, poetry, and prophecy. While understandable, the order has what appear to be some shortcomings. 
but the ancient Israelites or the Hebrews, since Father is identified in the Old Covenant as the Elohim of the Hebrews, so the Hebrews used, uh, taught from the, the way the order of everything was in the Tanakh, from my understanding, include, including our Messiah. Again, Yahushua, and not only Yahushua, but in in the the days of the uh, Israelite Hebrews, which we identified Jews, in some instances, uh, they they were referring to the law, the prophets, and the writings, and this is seen in Luke twenty four, forty four, where. Yahushua told the two men again on the road to a man, Manus, These are my words that I spoke to you while I saw, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So we see that there's a different order, and I just want to give you something to think about. The order that um, the Tanakh was first in, and somehow we done got out of that order, just as a lot of other things are out of order. So I just wanted to share this with you, so you can check in the um, where we lead the description, where I put some uh, links there, so that you can. You can um, look at some of these things yourself, and then you can look at your King James uh, Bible and other Bibles and see that they are not, the Old Testament is not in the same order. So, again, something to think about. First and Second Chronicles. In the Subterrigent, a Greek translation of the Old Testament produced around 300 B.C., the title translates as the books of things left out, referring to additional details surrounding the historical events recorded in the books of Samuel and Kings. Due to the Judean emphasis of the Chronicles, we learn much more about the southern kingdom of Judah and its kings. The book of Kings contains more detail about the northern kingdom of Israel. The books of First and Second Chronicles were invaluable in the restoration of Judah after their time in Babylon. The remnant returned to a ruined Jerusalem, a destroyed temple and many other obstacles to their success. They must have felt overwhelmed and forsaken by Elohim. By tracing the history of Elohim's people, the oracle of the Chronicles reminded the new generation that Elohim had been their help in ages past. By emphasizing the unconditional Davidic covenant, he gave them hope for the future. By including the genealogies, he showed them that they were the ones to continue their legacy. In short, the author of the Chronicles showed a despairing people that they had a powerful, faithful Elohim who would strengthen them to rebuild the temple and the city. To me, see, this makes sense because you have First and Second Chronicles ending the Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew. Uh, word of Father, and then next you come into the New Covenant, You uh, uh, genealogies are listed in the First and Second Chronicles, and genealogy begin in Matthew to let you know about the genealogy of the Messiah, so that makes sense. Anyway, just something to think about as we continue to study the word of the living 
Elohim of Israel, Baruch Hashem Yahuwah. We give praise and thank you for giving us this information and opening our eyes and understanding of the knowledge that you've given to us in Yahushua. Amen.